Hi everyone, I'm Amelia from the Brand Experience team and welcome back to another episode of uh, Money Wisdom Podcast. And today we have Chris, our CEO and founder with us and I'm very excited to be interviewing you today, Chris, on your latest Business Times article that talks about beyond finances, are you really prepared for retirement? Mm. So in this article, that was basically what you talked about. So yes. the first question is, how would um, someone who is closely tied their identity to retirement, I mean to their careers, mm. how would they actually, uh, how would they feel when they retire? And also, how do you think it affects their identity? Yeah, I think for people who are really passionate about their work and um, and they work very hard and obviously they are achievers and they do well, I think a lot of who they are is tied to their achievements. Mm. And a lot of who they are, um, and I, I think I shouldn't use they, I think myself included, a lot of who we are is tied also to the titles uh, behind our name. Right, so I mean, for me, I'm the CEO. So every day, um, if I give out name cards, you know, my name is there. I'm the CEO, and I've got all these achievements in my life, and I work very hard, enjoy my work. And when I retire, mm. uh, sometimes people feel that they have lost everything. Right? I mean, they don't know how to call themselves. Um, that's why you see sometimes on LinkedIn uh, page, you see them putting maybe ex CEO of Provident, right? Because it's just a bit weird to call yourself a retiree. Um, and in the article that I wrote, I said that even for myself, I'm not very comfortable uh, with the word retiree. Right? When I see the word retiree after my name, I felt a bit weird. So a lot of identity is tied to our work, our achievements and uh, who we are. Um, and it can be quite difficult if a person retires um, and then he suddenly felt that he doesn't know who he is already. Mm. And that can be quite dangerous. So actually, I think early on in the start of their career, it would be good to, even though if they have a successful career, mm. is to not tie their identity yeah. to, to what they do. Yeah, absolutely. And so many years ago, I've in a way mentally prepared myself to do that. I always tell myself it's no big deal. Right, and the reason why I've been invited for a lot of interviews, the reason why I've been uh, invited for many talks, uh, it's no big deal. It's not about me. It's the fact that I'm the CEO, and the minute I step down as CEO, I'm no longer the CEO. I will slowly not have all those things. I will have fewer and fewer business lunches. People will not find me as relevant. Of course, there are people who will treat me like a friend, and they still ask me out. But and I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm just saying that we're all like that. I, I've got, I'm less relevant, right? And after a while, I'm totally out of touch. I'm less re uh, relevant. So since many years ago, I've been preparing myself mentally to tell myself like, Chris, you're no big deal. Don't, don't, don't think that you are so big deal. You are so needed. Everybody wants you. It's just because at this stage of my life, you know, I am of some use to people and I'm glad that I'm of some use to people, you know, I can uh, contribute. Uh, I must prepare for the day whereby I'm so comfortable with the fact that I'm no longer CEO. I must be comfortable with myself. Otherwise, retirement is going to be very miserable. Mm, it's like in your article, there's the, there's the part on preparing, right, in your head, like a yeah. role play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, I, I call it a dry run, dry uh, run. Or, or a rehearsal to prepare for the day whereby... Um, yeah, you are, you are no longer in the corporate world. Um, yeah, if one has the privilege, no, I mean, not everybody has the privilege to take a career break, mm. to take a sabbatical and not work for a few months. Not everybody has the financial means to go overseas and stay for a few months, right? But even if you are Singapore, like I've written in the article, um, if you can do that, that would be great. Take that three, four months to do the things that you think you are going to do in retirement and, and just have a feel how is it like, uh, mm. you know, and if you don't like it, then you still have time to tweak it. Mm. Mm. Okay, thanks for the answer, Chris. So next, um, what role does community play in a fulfilling retirement? Yeah, I'm a big believer in community. Mm. Um, I think community can provide a few things. Uh. I mean, of course, community can provide companionship. Mm. And that's very important in retirement because when you don't come to work, I mean, ask the ladies who are full-time mothers. They don't have a strong community or they don't have, I wouldn't say not, they don't have a strong community, but uh, they don't have a large social circle like many people who are working, right? Every day you find colleagues that you can go lunch with. Mm. When you are in retirement, it can be very miserable if you don't have friends, 
right? So community provides that companionship, uh, that friendship. So that's one. Secondly, I think uh, community provides that accountability, mm-hmm. that somebody checks on you, uh, somebody makes sure that you are exercising, right? Somebody makes sure that you are not at home and just rotting away. You have somebody that will hold you accountable. Mm. So I think community will can do that for you. I think the third thing that community can do is that they provide you with mental stimulation. I mean, if you're on your own and you're every day on your own, you're not talking to anyone mentally. I think that's not very good. It's not very healthy. Nobody's mm. challenging you, right? Even if you quarrel with your friends, that's a mental stimulation, <laughs> right? Uh, so I think uh, community can do that. And last and definitely not least, very important, community can provide, if you have really a strong community and a group of friends that um, you grew up with and can trust, that community of friends can provide you with the care, especially if your partner is no longer around mm. and your children, they have grown up. Right? They might not even be staying with you. Some of your children might be overseas. Mm. Then who's going to provide you that care? I mean, it's, we always hear of, in the news, right, that the seniors, some of them die alone at home. And they are, uh, people don't realize it until weeks, months mm. later. That's very sad, right? Very sad. Um, so I think if you have a strong community, then they can provide you with that care and we can provide them with the care it's the caring for uh, each other so I think community is very important and that is why I think I mean I'm at an age whereby most of my friends that I've grown up with their yeah, children have grown up so we have a lot more time with each other I mean in the past when we were still having young children we have no time right mm. we go to work and then after work we go back home we take care of the family we, we bring up the children we hardly have time to spend with our friends. But today I realized that a lot of my secondary school friends, uh, a lot of my friends were with me in the polytechnic. We are meeting more often. Oh, nice. Yeah, because we have time, right? So, and, and we value that because if we don't have friends and then we suddenly go into retirement, we have no community. It's going to be very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, yeah, but it's going to be more difficult to build up that relationship overnight. Right, it'll take some time. And so just years before going to retirement, it'll be great to catch up with your friends, form that strong community. I mean, we people at our age, and I mean, you're not that old, Amelia, but you will realize that as you get older, your circle of friends will shrink. Mm, I really see that happening. Right, we are mm. more a bit more selective also yeah. with our friends. Right, so as we go into retirement, I'm not saying that we have a whole village of friends. Even if we have, because of our social work involvement, that's great. But find in that social, that big group, a few friends, three friends, four friends that you know that you can trust your life with. Mm. That 2 a.m. in the morning, you can call and this friend will actually come down. Mm. Right? I think that's actually very important uh, as we go into retirement. Yeah. And I think also when you're in retirement, it's a great chance to make new friends. Yep. Yeah, even sure. though the relationship may not be like we go way back, but mm. having new friends, fresh yeah. perspectives, new experiences, I think it's very refreshing. And it's, it's best if you can spend time with young people. Yeah. If they want to spend time with you, that's great, right? Because the thing about young people is they give you a lot of energy, mm. right? I mean, it's important to have friends at our, uh, I mean, of our age mm. who really understand us. But when we spend time with young people, they give us a lot of energy, they have ideas. So make ourselves... Exciting for them, right? If you are a naggy old man, if, if I become a naggy old man, I don't think any young people want to spend time with me. Okay. Do you want to do a shout out to any friends you'll be hanging out with in retirement? Uh, I'm actually meeting them tomorrow, my group of secondary school friends. Secondary school uh, friends. We playfully call ourselves the Four Musketeers, although they are supposed to be only three Musketeers. Mm-hmm. But we call ourselves the Four Musketeers. Uh, we have known each other since secondary one. Wow. Uh, and, you know, when we were, uh, I mean, three out of four of us, uh, we are married and we have children. Um, and we had young children growing up. We didn't spend as much time with each other, but we always remain in contact. And when we meet, we have a lot of things to say. And we have been meeting so far every month, mm. at least once. And when we meet, I don't know, we, we, like, we can speak for three hours. I don't know why we got so many things to talk about. So the four Musketeers, you know who you are. <laughs> you should do a podcast with them. 
If they want to come, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. The four of you all just talk. That's a great idea. Yeah, retirement okay. job. I will suggest to them tomorrow when we meet, you know, mm. and yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, once a month, like low commitment. Once a month, do podcast. Yeah. Oh, okay, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I'm not sure whether they have. I'm not sure where they have time to come during the day. I when mean, you they're all still, hang out, they're still working. Ten minutes of it is a podcast. Yeah, I'll see. I'll ask okay. them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To the next question. So this one's a bit more serious. What fears do you personally have for retirement, even as you are well prepared for it financially? Actually, I don't really have a fear, honestly. Yeah, I am uh, quite ready to go. I mean, mentally, mm. I am quite ready to go into retirement. Uh, if anything, fang pu xia, right? If I cannot, okay, I cannot let go is the wrong word. Lah. But uh, what I'll be concerned about is whether the company is ready, right? Because uh, as a founder, um, it is my responsibility to make sure that when I fade off from the scene or when I fade out from the scene, the company is in good hands, the company is ready, uh, the client and my money who is in Provident can be well taken care of. Yeah, And w- once I can do that, I have actually no fear going to retirement. I'm actually very ready, uh, mentally ready to do that because uh, I'm quite clear in my mind what exactly I want to do. Um, and I'm excited to do those things. I don't want to delay too long to do it. My mindset has always been that if the average life expectancy of Singaporeans is about 85 years old, usually the last 10 years, not so healthy. I'm trying to change that um, to make sure that my last 10 years of my life should not be unhealthy. But Mm -hmm. if I take the norm that the last 10 years, usually we are weaker, we may have some sicknesses and all that, that means I have up to 75 years old to do whatever I want to do. And if I retire at the age of 60, I've only got 15 years. Mm. If, de- if I delay it by five years at 65, I've only got 10 years to do those things that I really, really want to do. And 10, 15 years is a very short time. Mm. It flies past very quickly, mm. right? Yeah, I'm sure you remember. Yeah, we think that we have, yes, tomorrow always, right? But it may not always be the case. Yeah, 10 years ago, yeah. you were just 15, right? Uh, not so really, after ten thanks. years, <laughs> is time fly by so fast, right? Yeah. And I was just uh, telling my wife yesterday that uh, wow, we're coming to the last quarter of the year. Twenty twenty four flew by so fast. So um, yes, I'm actually not fearful. I'm actually really looking forward to the next phase of my life. But at this point. Uh, no, I can't, okay, because uh, there are still things to do here at uh, Provident. And the minute we are ready, I'm actually very happy to transit into, I won't call it retirement. Uh, okay, but we use retirement as the, as the word, but you know what I mean. It's just a, a, a next phase of life. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Before we jump into today's episode, I'm excited to share about our upcoming webinar. If you've ever wondered how Provident, Southeast Asia's first fee-only wealth advisory firm, sets itself apart from the traditional commission-based firms, this is your chance to find out. Join us to see if fee-only advice is right for you and learn some practical tips to make smarter financial decisions so you can live the good life you've always wanted. Click the link in the show notes to register and we'll love to see you there. Now let's dive into today's episode. Okay, so this is a nice flow into the next question. Looking back at your career, what moments do you think would be the hardest to let go of besides mm. us? Well, <laughs> it's you all. Yeah, so I, I, like I said, I, I don't have problems letting go of titles, privileges. Uh, I have absolutely no problem. I have no problem letting go of the limelight uh, because part of my job is to go on media. Uh, you all know I'm actually an introvert by nature, first third expressive, right? So I'm actually perfectly fine not out there, not talking. Uh, my family will tell you that when I go back home, uh, I don't talk very much. Your words all used up at work, really. Finish. Yeah, <laughs> I don't talk very much. And uh, I'm the kind that go to a party and I'll sit one corner. If I find one person that I can talk to, I grab this person, sit down, and I'll talk to this person for two hours. I mm. won't move around. So I, I have no problem letting go of these things. But um, it's, 
that whole journey with the provident people, the working together, going through the ups and downs of the business, the challenges we face, and then we come together and we solve the problem, the rallying of everybody to want to overcome uh, obstacles, mm. that part I will miss. Mm. It's very difficult to get that when you are in retirement. Yeah. Right? So I, I enjoy that part, and I think that if I uh, find okay, I won't say let go lah, but I will miss right. It's really that part, mm. yeah, of work. I think we are not ready to let you go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to say that because some sometimes when you get too old, right? Uh, people are like asking why are you not gone yet. Nah? Well, definitely it's, not the case here, right, so, Helen? <laughs> so we don't want to outstay our. I mean, it's very important for uh, senior people not to outstay our welcome. We need to know when is a good time to hand over to the uh, next generation. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so what advice would you give to someone who feels anxious about losing their sense of purpose after retiring? Fine. Find a new one. Mm. I mean, in fact, uh, even at work, I find that our sense of purpose cannot be work. It cannot be work. Mm. It must be more than the work itself. It must be the impact you can make through your work. Whether it is the impact to the greater, so- uh, the greater society at large or impact to your own personal lives or impact to your family, those things must give must give you that sense of purpose, not the actual uh, work itself. Mm. Right, you've asked, you've asked Helen, right? Yeah. Nobody, you, all of you cannot see her because <laughs> we can see her because she's behind <laughs> the camera, right? I mean, what is her purpose? Pressing keyboards and turning the camera, no purpose, right? But it's the purpose behind all these contents that go out, that impact lives, that makes it meaningful right yes of course when we retire from corporate work we lose that then find one find something else that uh, we can do right um, and sometimes and I've actually shared that in our Ikigai podcast right sometimes it's not the big thing because sometimes when we think about purpose we think about that one big thing mm. that I must do I must save the world you know but it doesn't have to be like that. Not all of us are called to have that one big purpose. Mm. We can have many, 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 many small ikigais. Mm. Um, and ikigai means things that you do on a daily basis that you find meaning. Right? It can even be your hobby, it can be your family, it can be, it can be many, many small things. Right? So years before when you, you, you transit into this phase of life, start to think about what are some of these ikigai decisions that you need to make. Find your ikigai, slowly do them so that the transition is so smooth. Right? After you finish that corporate purpose, you are mm. all ready and then you move into, into, into retirement and you have all these things that you can do and you are still making an impact to the world. Um, not in the, it doesn't have to be in a big way, but more importantly, you are finding meaning in the small things in life. In fact, yeah, I paused for a while because uh, just before I came into the studio for recording, right, and I was just chatting with my friend, uh, and his name is Devadas. He will, he will watch this, mm-hmm. and he said that uh, because he's retired, and so I asked him, hey, How are you? and he said, Good. Uh, and he says he's learning to live life a day at a time. Mm-hmm. He said, this is the mindset of a retiree. And in fact, he said that should be the mindset of everyone. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, how true that is. Because sometimes we always say that, right? We over plan. And when we over plan, there's a saying that man propose, but God may dispose, right? So uh, we learn to live each day at a time and we learn to find meaningful things that we can do each day at a time get all that ready before you transit retirement the retirement is going to be a very fun it's going to i think it's going to be the best part of your life Mm. yeah 
I'm looking forward to that. You're very you. far, lah. You're very far from it. <laughs> you're very far for from it. I'm looking oh, forward, yeah, okay, for okay. you to retire, okay. but I'm not looking yeah. forward that day for myself. You got another forty more years. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Okay, so this last question. You mentioned that when you retire, you want to be a life coach mm. to, uh, to the underdogs and to those who are down and out. So, how mm. does one apply? And am I eligible? Mm, you're not an underdog, right? You went to SMU. You know, you did well, <laughs> so you're not an underdog. Okay, so an underdog by definition, right, is someone that is not expected to win. Mm. Say, for example, in a tournament, in a competition, when we say someone is an underdog, this person is not expected to win for many reasons, right? This person may, um, may started not so well in life, disadvantage, they did not have all the support that they need to have, the family may not have the resources to help them, right? And, but it's, it's, it's relative, Right, I mean, it's very difficult to say this person is an underdog. This person is not an underdog, mm. but uh, generally, um, if I'm able to have someone or find someone okay, that I feel that has the potential to do better in life, but because of certain circumstances, uh, they are not doing as well. Mm. I would like to encourage them uh, through coaching because. As I, as I have always said, I'm an underdog uh, myself. Um, and I'm very grateful that uh, I've done better than I, what I should be given my family circumstances. Mm. And that's my way of uh, giving back. But I need to say this. You know, after I did the video at 1M65 and I mentioned about that as well, and then I've got people asking me whether I can mentor and coach them now. Yeah, but I can't. Because I have no time now Not to, yet. To, to do <laughs> it. Yeah, I mean, I, I coach my own people, mm. but I don't have time for... I mean, I used to do external engagement, but I have absolutely no time now to do it. But after I retire, I hope to do that. Uh, and to answer that question, yeah, I'm happy to mentor you when I retire, although you're not an underdog. Yeah. You can start mentoring me now. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, I think after this you have a long line also. Yeah, but I said I'm no first. already. I can't I can't do it. I can't do it now. I just have Q number. No time. It's very important also that uh which I shared with you all, which I don't have enough of it. I don't have enough utori. I don't have enough my space. I don't have enough margins in life. Personally I don't have. I know I don't have and I need to have. Right? And so I can't accept uh, everything that come my way, although I am always very tempted when people say, can I, I meet you? I want to check out something from you. You know, uh, can you mentor me? It's always very tempting to say yes, but I know that I will be doing myself, my family, uh, fellow berries in Providence, and even the mentor or the coachee, a great disfavor. Because if I have no margins, I'm empty inside, how to give? Right? So I need to keep that reservoir of energy, of ideas uh, to a group of people that I can uh, best impact at least at this stage of life until I enter into the final phase uh, called, unfortunately, a bad word, retirement. Do you have anything else to add? I've added already. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> this part not part of this part wasn't part of the question. Sorry. But for if that. Helen says that the <laughs> podcast is too short, I need to speak for another ten minutes. Then I'll try and find <laughs> things to say for the next ten minutes. Okay. But otherwise, I, no. All right. You can do you. your outro. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Helen, behind the scenes. So we've come to the end of this podcast episode and we hope you've enjoyed the discussion on Beyond Finances, Are You Really Ready for Retirement? So the link to the Business Times article will be provided below and we hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Thank you for listening and please rate us on your favourite podcast platform. And with that, we'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. All analysis, views or opinions from interviews, recommendations and other information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein are provided for general information purposes only. Information expressed does not take into account any specific situation, particular needs or objectives and should not be construed as specific advice or a recommendation. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal or tax professional before taking any action. Provident Limited does not accept any liability for any loss whatsoever arising from any use of the information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein. 
All contents and information contained herein may not be copied or reproduced in whole or in part by any means without prior consent of Provident Limited.